This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Clunasay, this is Clunasay Trading um, on September 15th, middle of the month, always some turbulence. We know that. We've talked about it many, many times. September 15, 2019, it's approximately 9.05 p.m. Chinese markets will be opening up. We'll have the yuan fix, that the currency fix that we all know about against the U.S. dollar, all that stuff. But that is not what's in focus tonight. Um, session will be recorded, uploaded to the Google YouTube channel for viewing by all other members and free trial subscribers, as well as anyone else out there with internet access can certainly view our absolutely precision forecast and uh, and, and hopefully uh, they'll get something out of it. That's what we try to do here. Um, on that note, let us begin. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. And we shall begin. I'm trying to open up on my other end one of my uh, the code screen and stuff so we can talk a little thing about stocks too as we move along. Okay, so we have uh, um, we have our good friend Mike Harrington, uh, Mike H, uh, I should say. Sound like Donald Trump here, Mike H, um, who just joined us, and we might have some other people filter in. Uh, I was a little bit active on stock tweets after a long time, just putting in my two cents and stuff. Still have about 30 plus thousand followers in there. I have no idea why they still follow me, given the fact that I uh, probably post maybe one or two charts uh, there uh, during the day if I have time, mostly S&P charts and such. And um, but hey, it's always good to know that they still think that some of my uh, missives that I post out there are worth their time and uh, more correct than not. You know, that's what this game is all about. It's not what you lose, it's what you make. And net net, if you are higher over a reasonable period of time, then you are going to go well ahead. You cannot win every trade um, and uh, you can't lose every trade, but you need to be make more on the winning trades than on the losing trades and that's how you stay ahead of the game. We have a member, I mean, I don't know if you member or not, Nina, who just joined us. Nina, can you hear us? Are you connected visually as well as on the audio? You can type in on the dialog box if you don't have a headset. Because the name doesn't sound familiar. I did put the link up on Stock Twist today for you know for a change, so maybe we'll get some other people to hear what we talk about. Okay, great, Nina. And Nina, did you get the link from Stock Twits or because I don't, I don't, you know, we kind of know all our members on a, you know. Oh, okay, that's great. All right. Well, you'll have a fun time because we are very unorthodox. I have to be on my best behavior. Jody has told me that, um, and. Um, so I have to not go on to my rants about what I really believe in and stuff. We'll stick to charts. We'll uh, put in a couple of uh, uh, important points and, uh, and we'll see how those pan out over the next couple of days. So let us begin. So first of all, the biggest news is, which you all should know about by now because it's all on my Twitter feed um, for all my members to see over the weekend, I posted it out, which is the big attack on, on the Saudi oil fields, which is actually big news. Uh, by the conflict that is happening next door in Yemen. Now, I don't want to go into geopolitics, which you all know I am almost a full-scale expert on. I'm not going to uh, make any qualms about that. But the Houthi rebels, who are basically fighting for their independence against, uh, uh, other, uh, against the other majority in Yemen, right next door, it's always been a trouble spot ever. Well, most world spots, uh, I mean, most uh, parts of the world are, are, are always conflicts. We even have conflicts here in the U.S. I mean, think about that for a minute. Um, and we're all supposed to be civilized people. So uh, they uh, supposedly, um, and these are backed by the Iranians. Uh, that's a known fact. And uh, they uh, they bombed some serious Saudi uh, uh, major oil refined pipelines. I mean, that's serious stuff. You know, it's somebody like sabotaging our pipelines. You know, coming in from Canada and uh, and going across the country. I mean, it's serious stuff. So what the Saudis did was they said they'd shut down 50% of their refinery oil drilling operations and um, and and that is and that's 6% of the world's global output of oil 
I mean, serious stuff here. God knows how many barrels. I don't have that number for you. I'm not a, that much of an oil expert. So, so everything. So the Saudi market tanked about three percent. Um, initial reaction in the global markets is like, oh my God, uh, are we going to war with Iran? Which I'm going to put my two cents out there in a second. Uh, and um, uh, uh, President Trump immediately uh, reacted to it uh, in, in his tweet, which rightfully so he should and uh, commend him for that, that we're locked and loaded. That's uh, that's Donald speak. That's like uh, clueless aid trading speak. We're all New Yorkers after all. We like to talk big, right? Uh, impact statements. And um, so we're locked and loaded. And uh, but there was one key statement in his tweet that most people are don't understand. He said we are awaiting the Saudi decision as to who might be behind the attack. That's a key statement. In my opinion, just to get straight to the point, we are not going to war with Iran. Because just a couple of days ago, if you notice, President Trump, and please somebody please mute their uh, mic in the back. Um, they, they, uh, we had, um, we had uh, uh, comments out of uh, President Trump himself that he is willing to talk to Iran and all that stuff, a conciliatory statement. So all of a sudden, um, these uh, Iran-backed rebels bomb world's biggest oil producer. They're the kings of oil, as you know. Uh, and uh, what do you think? He's just going to uh, drop a couple of JDAMs like we did in Iraq and then just say, OK, it's over now. We're not going to war with Iran, okay? And the key thing that you have to understand, which most people don't really understand, Middle Eastern politics, neither do I, but I think I understand more than others, is the fact that Iran is a serious military power. They say in Iraq and Saddam Hussein and all that stuff, drop a couple of JDAMs and he's running out in the desert, you know, with his billions and he gets caught by his own people and hanged and all that stuff. This is Iran, okay? You don't do that. Uh, so, so the key is that the Saudis most probably will say, yes, it's backed by Iran. This is my opinion, okay? Uh, it's backed by Iran, but uh, we think that they didn't really approve it. Just the way when Iran uh, knocked out one of our drones, if you guys remember, over the state, Strait of Hormuz, which is the world's largest shipping channel. President Trump, what do you say? Tweet it out. He goes, I think it was a mistake on their part. Think about that for a minute. All right. It's a mistake on their part. They didn't really want to do it. Maybe somebody in their military command said, hey, shoot out, you know, uh, knock out a U.S. military drone flying close to Iranian waters or close to their coast. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, most of the times I've talked about this stuff while the rest of the RET crowd, which is a retail emotional crowd, just freaks out like, oh my God, we're going into a full-scale World War III. It's all bullshit, okay? Excuse my French. We're not. Now, initial reaction in the markets is going to be down. That's why futures are down 21 points. You can see that right there. So what gives? So I'll tell you a very simple thing here. I'm a survivor of 9-11. Do I say that with pride? No. I say that with sorrow. And... And, and what happened after 9-11? We were closed for the market for a week. And that was the most devastating terrorist incident in American soil in God knows how long. Forever. I mean, history. So what happened? The markets opened a week later and just ramped and went straight to the roof. What happened after the Iraq war? We dropped all those heavy-duty, monster, mother of all bombs all over Certain certain targeted areas in in uh, the presidential palace and stuff. You remember those those scenes, right? They're like huge Fourth of July fire, you know, fireworks and not fun thing, you know, when you're down there, you know, and these JDMs are falling on you, obviously. But what happened to the markets after that? The markets went up. What happened when we invaded Panama years and years ago? The market went up. Generally speaking. And I hate saying this, but when you have, when you have, um, and while I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep you guys awake. Uh, I'm just showing you certain levels here, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. So, generally speaking, a major conflict, and I tell you, I'm telling you straight out, if we go to war with Iran, the market's going to be down a thousand points. It's a fact. There's nothing to it. All right. 
Um, but given where we are right now, with uh, heavy rhetoric and all that stuff, and the Saudis haven't even now, you know, said, oh, it's definitive the Iran. And I do want to point out one thing in a very uh, straightforward way. I think all of you agree with me. We're going to drop JDAMs from the top on behalf of what? Behalf of the Saudi kings and Israel? No. Look, I'm a patriot. I want to see where America benefits. We were certainly not going to put our boys on the ground out there to die. And this is serious stuff I'm talking about, okay? So wake up and listen. So, and we, and if we do drop a couple of targeted attacks on Iranian oil, uh, not necessarily oil refineries, we don't want to completely collapse the overall system because that's going to be anarchy. But we, let's say we hit some of their military installations and all that stuff, airports, you know, where they have their fighter jets and stuff like that. Why don't those guys out there, the Saudis and the Israelis, who are best buddies, believe it or not, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. We have great relations with Saudi Arabia, even though all 11 of the 9-11 guys came from Saudi Arabia, right? And I have nothing against it. The new Saudi guy is trying to do some great things. Um, why don't they go out and do it? Why don't they do the dirty job? They have all our finest military. Israel certainly does. Saudi Arabia does. They have the F-16, F-18 Hornets. They have all kinds of missiles. We sell billions and billions of dollars worth of armaments to them. And to, for Israel, we give it away to them, right? Mostly. Because they are the ultimate ally in the Middle East. So why don't they go and do the dirty job of fighting the Iranians? Why do we have to do it? Think, right? That's why we're not going to do it. Now, can we bomb a couple of certain installation stuff? Yes. And that's why the markets are reacting the way they are. So keep that in background as we prepare ourselves to enter Monday. And we're going to look at the technical aspect of what will happen. 99% of traders out there have no frigging clue. They can't even pinpoint half the countries in the Middle East. Oman, Yemen. And what the significance of that is to our markets. So I say, fine. That's the reason why our core members at Clueless A Trading, despite everything that has happened, whether political upheaval, the Greek crisis, Brexit, Donald Trump's win. Go listen to my video, what I said two days later. After the market, the futures were down almost a thousand points on the night of the elections when he won. What's going to happen? And everything that I said came right. So it is up to you to figure out what you want to do. Because first thing about trading is you need to start with your mental framework. And then your trading setups. Because if your mental framework is purely hardcore, bearish, then your trading setup is going to be completely screwed up. All right. So going back to the whole thing, there are two things, and let me try to get this board up here. There are two things that's going to happen this week. Let's make this, let's clean this. Is, now I'm looking for the little pen so I can write on the thing. I don't know where it disappeared. The two things, what's the most important thing? And Jody knows the answer. What's the most important thing that is that is relevant to the markets this week? Anyone who's listened to my last week's video, Sunday video, or even Thursday one knows. What's the most important thing that's happening this week? Aside from this situation with oil, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and all that stuff. Come on, guys. Somebody wake up and tell me. I mean, you guys are, are traders, right? And it doesn't have to be... Okay, Nina gave the answer. The Fed. So Nina gets first prize. Yeah, exactly. It's simple. It's the Fed. It's the Fed. FOMC. Wednesday. 18th. That's it. Now, 
My opinion is that given the global turbulence of what is going on, the Fed now has a higher, high probability, somebody fill in the bank, of cutting rates by how much? 50. Who said that? Dominic. Hey, Dominic, how are you? Good. Um, yeah, 50 what? Percent basis points. Basis points, which is how much in percentage points? It's half a percentage point, right? That is huge. Yeah, so there's a higher probability they're going to do that. They're going to say, you know what? We're just going to push in. It's like getting a big shot of vitamin B12. Like, okay, time to just wake up, jolt everything, calm the markets. And we're great. So that's going to happen. Markets are going to hire. They're going to, we're going to hit our levels that we have talked about all, you know, forever, which is 1360, possibly 1380, um, or even 1340, you know, on the low end. And then the markets are going to sell. That's just what markets do. Technically, we're going to get seriously overbought. The markets going to be like, oh my God, are they that frigging scared that they're cutting the Fed funds rate by half a percentage point? Um, and 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 uh, uh, that's like big. Like it's always like you know, after a nice party, you get a hangover, right? So that's exactly what's going to happen. We're prepared. Now, if the Fed does cut 20, uh, 50, uh, this is 50 BPS. Thanks, uh, Dominic. So the, the Fed cuts uh, uh, 25 BPS, which is a quarter of a percentage point, the markets are going to tank. They're going to tank. We're going to be down like 500 points, like before you even, you know, like figure out what's going to happen after a quarter percentage points. The markets will find the floor and move higher. What is half a percent? You know, if we drop, we're probably going to drop. We're going to look at the chart. So we're going to figure out from the charts. We're going to drop, which we have talked about before. Uh, and then the markets are going to bounce. Because we have another thing happening this week. And maybe Nina can answer the question. What else is the big event this week? Aside from the Fed, I'll give you a hint, similar to the Federal Reserve Central Bank. Quad witching. Mm, yeah, that's that's a technical factor. We have monthly OPEX, which is generally a bullish event. Uh, monthly OPEX Friday, but that is more of a technical event. But from a central bank event, I'm almost giving away the answer. Um, the it is a bunch of central banks, the Switzerland, Bank of Japan, and a bunch of other central banks, because we have already out with the ECB we, last week, right? You guys remember that? So lots of liquidity. They're like doing QE full blast, like let it go. Mario Draghi is like Donald's like, you know, champion, like we should go into negative rates. I'm like, oh my Lord, you know, but President Trump is obviously exaggerating. We go into negative rates, our markets are gonna go way down. That's the end of the election win, I'll tell you that. So, and we don't want that, don't forget. So so central banks in Switzerland and all, uh, Japan, um, Swiss, which is very, very important, uh, they are all gonna meet and they're all gonna do things. So all of them are gonna follow the ECB, European Central Bank example of loser monetary policy and all that stuff. Now, no, first part of the session, as I told you, we're just painting the background of things that will move the market. I can show you enough stocks which are gonna go higher, i.e., who owns autoimmune? The peanut allergy drug. The stock is already up five bucks as of when they opened on Friday, that's 20%. So it doesn't matter what you do out there as long as you own some of the selected trades that we put out there. And that's, and every word that I read, it's been covered worldwide. The world's first peanut allergy major approval, final approval FDA comes a bit later on, but eight to one adcom approval means big. The stock is up about 20%. So who the heck cares if the Saudis and Iranians want to go with each other's throat? This religious war has been going on for centuries. Anyone who knows about Islamic history. So there you go. All right. So this is the, that's the other uh, most important, one of the most important things here. Let's look at the econ calendar. 
Uh, and then we're going to dive into charts. Yeah, Nina said BOJ. I like you, Nina. You should join us because we're cerebral and tactical. All right? So whoever you are, you should definitely try us out because we nail a lot of things real big, especially when everybody else is in the caves. Um, so let's do global. Oh, hold on. Now we bring this in. Simplest way. Anyone can do this. Lots of stuff going on, right? Lots of these little beautiful flags, places we'd like to go in Europe. Love going to Europe. Uh, so um, you can see here, lots of big stuff going on this week. Then we have our retail sale. Okay, let's start off the first the first thing, what are important, like I normally do. So um, we have uh, uh, TD Ameritrade IMX. Who the heck cares? Uh, consumer credit, somewhat important. One second. There we go. All right. This is Chinese. This is uh, uh, Chinese CPI and PPI. That's important. Um, but we are. But it's not that important. Oh, what's the other big thing that's happening this coming week? I already tweeted out. Let's see who who can like quickly cheat and tell me, which is huge. Because one thing about trading is you need to be somewhat informed. And the more you stay informed, you don't have to really work at it. You just have to look at my Twitter feed. That's almost live 24-7 forever. But what else is going on this week? And that's the reason US why the markets and, rally. Huh? U.S. and Chinese officials are meeting. Yeah, there you go. The, US, the, the, the junior level Chinese uh, guys are meeting. You know, that's how it happens. The, the junior level guys, just like any other business, any other uh, politics, they meet, they hammer out the details, and then the big boys turn up and say, okay, you know, we had a meeting of minds. What do you think President Trump's like delaying tariffs here and there because he just had a good day and woke up like all fresh and said, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to take go for a round of golf in Bedminster, which is about 20 miles away from me. Uh, no. He knows he wants to cut a deal. So he's giving them, you know, he said the biggest thing last week and most people don't realize. He said he did it on behalf of the Chinese 70th anniversary of China. Like, I'm like, whoa, talk about respect. What do you think? The Chinese are like, oh, no, 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 no. Those guys are big into tradition and respect, okay? So, so that's big. So the Chinese thing, exactly. So we have a lot of numbers. We have a lot of numbers coming out. You know, Joel's numbers, the jobs numbers, not that, that, that important. Jobs, uh, it's going. US PPI, very important, Wednesday, okay? Shows the inflationary pressures. Now, the Fed will not change the direction with rates, just so you guys understand that, just because of one perk up on inflation. Oil is up like God knows how much. We're going to look at the charts in a minute. Whoa, they're up 16 bucks. No, it's not 16 bucks. It's up six dollars. It's up 10 percent. All's up 10 percent right now. Gold is up 16 bucks. Who cares? So, um, so short term, yeah, we're gonna have a blip on inflationary numbers, most probably. But will they be reflected on Wednesday's numbers? No. But uh, the Fed's not gonna change direction that way. Um, so we have a lot. Uh, let's just put it this way, without boring everybody. Okay, this is not an economics lesson at the senior year in, in college. So there's a lot of stuff. This is important. U.S. consumer sentiment, very important. That held up last week. U.S. retail sales, very important. So that's Friday. And then on Wednesday, I hope I'm looking at the right date. Yeah, I am looking at the right date because Jody corrected me last time. And uh, Wednesday, we have the FOMC meeting, but... Oh, I'm looking at the wrong date and nobody corrected me. We should be looking at week of the 16. There we go. There we go. Now we're talking business. All right. So um so we have industrial production important, housing market, yeah, important, but no one really cares about housing that much anymore, right? Rates are at historic lows and nobody's buying houses. You go figure. Um so this is what is the killer. The two o'clock. And there is no press conference, I noticed, just 2 p.m. So that's great. So they won't be able to, this is good, because they won't be able to grill Jerome Powell, who is the worst at giving press conference, if you ask me. He's just so, like, uh, dry. 
right? Nobody understands. Half the reporters don't understand, you know, proper English. So they're like misinterpreting what he's saying. The traders on stock trades and all other forums, they're like all like Fed experts. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. Half of them, you know, just don't understand half the things he's saying because he's very, very proper, right? So glad I, there's no press conference. So um, then we go into Thursday and uh, we have leading economic indicators. Uh, we have uh, jobless claims, Bank of England announcement and minutes, very important, very important because they they're dealing with the Brexit crap, so very important. Um, so this is the, the, the global picture. So we have a lot of things on our table, but most important is this, and that's all that matters. And the rest of it are on the periphery, where the markets will move around for an hour or something like that. All right, so we're at. Any questions on this? No. Okay. Good. So let me let's uh, let's get out of dodge here and let's, we'll keep this aside. And let's take a look at the charts. So this is one of the charts that we've been trading off very effectively, very effectively. When I post these charts, as you know, I have all these arrows and everything, but you don't really need arrows to look at it. These are the levels we're dealing with. So what I'm looking at, uh, and this is a 15-minute chart, so it's got a lot more noise on it. But for active traders, this chart has served us very well. Every one of these uh, 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 uptrend channels and everything have been engaged. So we have a double top here around 3023 on the e minis. Um, and, and basically, as far as I can see, and I think all of you can see, we could, we most probably, and we should. And that's what excites me because I'm going to buy some things cheap, is we are going to retest probably by the open as Europe opens up and freaks out. Those guys freak out a heck of a lot more than we do. Um, is 29.70, possibly 29.50. This was your major breakout. This was the big cup and handle breakout that we basically nailed. The inverse head and shoulder, complex inverse head and shoulder. This was your neckline. This was around 27.48. We talked about it for days, and then it happened. And Plutus A trading members know it. And the ones who acted on it, they're very happy. The ones who didn't, I have nothing to say. So bottom line is you got that big breadth thrust, and then we created a wide trading range. This all happened in uh, in September, in the first week of September. And that trading range was 29.50 and 29.91. Give or take around 29.95 on the S&P 500. So here was your first trading range. Right, number one. This was number two, and this is what markets do, right? No straight lines. They, they're volatile. They move around ranges, and then if you're reading all the predictive analytics underneath the internals, which is not shown on this chart, and now I'm going to show everything because people who are not with closed day trading, they won't know what the heck, why we read the tea leaf so well. So I'm not going to just lay out all everything uh, on 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 these webinars. But we're going to look at it in a second. The simplest way of looking at it is stochastic, but we mix in with other stuff too, other indicators too. So this was the second trading range, and we broke out of that. So we broke out of this, then we broke out of this, and now this is the third trading range. And that third trading range, we are right now breaking below it, right there. So I say, worst case scenario, we are going to come down towards 29.50. That means a drop of roughly 40 handles, a drop of roughly 300 to 350 points on the Dow. Like they say in life, if you know what your risks are, if you know how much trouble you're going to get into, you're going to come out a winner because you know how to handle it. Is it going to feel good like because you have a couple of long calls here and there? No. Are you going to make a lot of money if you react? Of these levels, yes, no question about it. And given the backdrop of what I said earlier on, of what might happen, we have a significant opportunity. Saudi Arabia issues kind of a okay. Let's not go to war with my second cousin because I don't like his face. And they both need between you and me. They both need like you know, just like the hipsters in Brooklyn. And all the other guys, like, you know, so not just in Brooklyn, but all over the country, everyone needs to shave. I mean, everyone needs to basically, you know, not have beards which go down to their ankles, right? I'm dead serious, you know, just being straightforward. No offense meant to anybody. 
both from the Brooklyn hipsters to the Wisconsin guys and uh, whoever wants to, you know, and, and, and the Harley guys. I mean, come on, shave off your, shave your beards a little bit. Yeah, take it easy, all right? So the same thing with the Saudis and Iranians. They're all into this big-time facial hair. I don't know what's going on here. You know, Gillette's out of business out there, you know? I use Harry's, uh, Harry's uh, uh, blades. They're amazing, by the way. Um, so I'm serious, all right? They need to all calm down. Just, you know, look a little bit clean shaven, sit down, talk. Don't get into the, you know, that's it, all right? That's it. No offense meant to anybody with long beards. But uh, um, so the bottom line is at 350 points. If all hell breaks loose, then obviously we're going to test down the 2900 level. And um, just showing you what we might happen. What the consequences are, I can determine. I'm just giving you the game theory probabilities of what might happen. Okay. So that's your short-term chart. Doesn't tell us much other than the intraday volatility that we're going to incur. Let's go into, and uh, then uh, then we're going to look at the think or swim charts for a minute. Let's go into the longer-term charts and see where we can come down. And these things have worked for us, as all our dedicated members know, like magic. I'm not saying cut out the noise. There's some serious stuff, this stuff. You know, I'm kind of kidding around a little bit, but this is serious stuff, what happened. And if we do go to war with Iran, or we're not going to go to war with Iran, like Marines on the ground, but if we start dropping JDAMs and Iran's not like some, you know, they fought a 10-year war with Iraq, right? These guys are hardened. You know? So the key is that I'm sure our military leaders, who are the finest in the world, and President Trump, who understands, trust me, a lot of President Trumps, I'm a New Yorker, I know this, okay? Big business guys that he has dealt with are the Iranian millionaires and billionaires, the ones who live in the U.S., the ones with not ankle-length beards, okay? Or maybe they do, I don't know. So the point is that um, he knows what is really happening in Iran. He knows. Just the way he knows exactly what's happening in China because a lot of Chinese billionaires have dealt with the Trump organization and own significant amount of Trump properties. So aside from the political rhetoric aside, he understands. Okay. So this is the one hour chart. I like this better to keep myself grounded. Features are down about 19 right now. Um, I am looking at very simple technicals here. We had a major ascending triangle, which we nailed. Nailed. While well, everybody almost out there, and I monitor a lot of forums quickly. I don't comment in much of them. I don't even comment on stock tweets that much. And I did show up my chart. This was major. This was the end of August. Everybody's freaking out. It's the end of the world. This was the 800 point drop, if I remember. And I noticed what was going on. Just look at the structural part. Forget the internals for a minute. These were, this was a falling wedge, a complex one, but that's fine. That's what the markets do. Algorithmic high frequency trading is not going to make things simple for you. If they always raise their green flag, they say, buy me, buy me, buy me. How the hell are you going to make the big money? Think about that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. Why should the machines, who are not always profitable themselves, which are the robotic high-frequency trading black boxes, make it easy for you? They're going to create intense volatility, so you stay out of the positions, and then they're going to take the market higher. Because as we move on to the zooming out, when we move on to the daily and the weekly and the monthly, you're going to see we're in a bull trend. Doesn't mean you have to be an idiot and always like put all your money in on the long side. But I'm just saying you net you tend to you can skin the cat in many ways. You can be a dogmatic bearish trader, in which case you're losing a lot of money, or you can be a tactical bullish trader where you can take profits along the way, do a couple of shorts here and there during the day using the indices or whatever you want to use, but net net stay long which has paid the bills very handsomely. No one can deny that. Yeah, the bear, the dogmatic bears will deny that and the shorts. 
Oh no, the market's going to have a handbasket. We're going into recession. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're going into recession. That's why the 10-year government bond deal went up 22% from the bottom, which we actually pointed out and showed from 1.4%. It almost hit 1.9%. It hit 1.9%. That's big. It's like buying a biotech stock at a buck 40 and it's at a buck 90. You're like, wow, I'm a genius. Well, that's what happened with the long bond deal. And the markets love it. Because when yields go higher, bond prices go lower, money comes out of there, goes into the stock market. Okay. So this was an ascending triangle. Let's call it AT. So I'm going to write that with my mouse, okay? So AT, ascending triangle, broke out like a, I won't even say it. And then we created a, what is this? Okay, Jody, you should know this, or somebody else. What was that? I can hear you. My bull dragon. Uh, what bull dragon? Is that a nice Chinese dish you had last night? I mean, I like it. <laughs> but you're close, though. I mean, if it's, you know, that's good. It's uh, a bullish consolidation channel. You're good. You hear me? Because you hit it. Yeah, exactly. This is a bullish consolidation channel. Remember, bull flags happen in all kinds of ways, right? So a bull flag simply means that something is on a primary trend up and then it goes into a little fall, which basically profit taking comes in. That's a bull flag. Then bull flags can look like this, which is F for Frank. They move sideways, throw everybody out of the picture. They're like, oh my God, it's over. You know, uh, we're going to go back in the, under the rocks. You know, uh, it's everything's horrible and nothing, consolidation. Bull flags, which are the most bullish are like this. They point up trending higher. So this is this one. There you go. So yes, you're close. You didn't say the right term, but uh, you said it. Yeah, it's a bull flag consolidation channel. And this channel was good for about 50 points, 50 handles on the S&P, uh, on the E-minis. So that roughly means that it was good for about 350 to 400 points. So on a certain day, when you walk in and the market's down like 400 points, like, oh my God, it's all over. All, we, are, we rely here at Clueless A Trading on structured charts. So this was it. And then we broke out of it. September 11th, I always said never short September 11th week. Just never do it. And the markets took off. So the markets took off. And doesn't mean everything that you own is going to go up, but I'm saying the general market took off. So if you're in the if you're playing the clean market uh, 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 indices like the spies or the QQQs or this and that or the DIAs, that, you know, you said, well, we did. So now we are here. So now we know what this looks like. Let's break this down. Surgical. So we here was your ascending triangle uptrend line that started on August 25th. Very precise. So what are we doing right now? As the, uh, the Saudi mullahs, well, they're actually, the new guy is not that much from mullah. He's got a, like a shorter beard, right? Um, so um, and, and, and he goes by ABH or something. So this is what we're doing right now as we speak with Futures Down 18. Now, if I may ask you, and I'm not asking for hardcore opinions, does this really look like the world's falling apart? And this is where we closed that on Friday. Does this really look like the world's falling apart? I mean, seriously, at first look. No. It's just it's just testing support or the the previous breakout. So far it is. So far it yeah. is. But you know what panic says? That it'll probably slip lower. That's my prediction. As the market opens, as non clueless day trading members and the majority of trading forums out there who are like, yeah, short, 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 they're going to get burned. They'll make money for about five minutes. They won't know how to close their shorts. And then boom. And the ones who are short, yes, good for them. Market opens down 15, 16 point handles. They're going to make some money. But they got to be quick. We've been there. Jody, you know that, right? You've got to be quick with the shorts. So the point is, I am looking at, again, this what would be an optimal position to buy where we can buy a bunch of spike calls and add to any spike calls which I promoted, which were the 302 calls, as you know, after we nailed the 299 and the 301s. 
It's not like Levi's jeans, 301s. Okay, great. So, you, so 302s, those will be down. And when you're dollar cost averaging, you want to have the lowest price possible to bring your cost down. So I would be, I'd be liking if you ask me. And please ask me. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, that I would be liking 29.50. So which means futures down 30 from where we are right now. No, 29.50 means futures at 29.90 right now. So another 40 down would mean futures would be down 60 points. Like, oh my God, Armageddon, you know? Honestly speaking, if you close and start to stay as unemotional as possible, which is very hard for all of us, all right? That would be the ultimate buying opportunity. Futures opening down 60. Now, is it gonna happen? I don't think so. I don't think so. Unless the Saudis say, that's it, we're going to war. Hello, Mr. Rouhani, my second cousin from nine centuries ago. I'm going to just completely blow you out of the sky. Israelis join in the picture. The Israelis are always itching for a fight. You know that. I have great Israeli friends. Back from my days, those guys always want to fight. Okay? <laughs> it's in their blood. They have the best military. They're dedicated. They're tactical warriors. So if they get into that, hey, we're going to take out 2950 and possibly test 2900. At that point, Amazon and Apple and Boeing are going to be so cheap. You better be buying with McLaren oscillators down like minus 70. You know what to do. You just got to buy. So this is it. So that's the technical picture. So the one hour chart is important. The 15 minute chart has too much noise. I'm seeing what I'm seeing. This was the breakout market generally, regardless of oil strikes, oil shooting higher, Iranian drone strikes, Houthi drone strikes, whatever it is, right? Um, we were going to ch uh, check 2950. That's my opinion. But this gave us a reason to do it faster. Will it happen? Honestly, I'd like it to happen. I want things cheap. Honestly, I don't want the markets to open up like this because what's going to happen is we are going to be fully overbought. If we get a issuance overnight from the Saudi government that, okay, we think it was the Houthi rebels not under supervision of the Iranian Central Command, markets are going to rally. Just so you understand, that's how it happens. So we're going to open up higher. Everyone's going to be super excited. You better be selling. You better be selling. Because somewhere in this level, as I've shown from weeks ago, is where things really get overbought here, here. Fed cuts 50 basis points, we're going here. And there will be fat institutional algorithmic high frequencies trading programs, including ours, non-programmatic selling, hitting, I'll be selling. Okay, so what would be great, let's keep this simple, is we pull back, have a panic attack, not us, the market, the rest of the RET retail emotional traders. Let's have a panic attack. Let's go retest the breakout of the ascending triangle that we called for weeks, days, days, we called. Okay, let's hit it there. Maybe slip and slide a little bit. And then the Fed does what they need to do and we zigzag and rally up here. That would be the real money maker. Not, I repeat, a major move up, in which case I'm just selling. A few spike calls and stuff, I'm just selling. Because that means if this happens before the Fed, that means the Fed will come out, even, you know, even if they cut 50 basis points, what if they make a hawkish comment like, okay, this is it. This could be a communique from the Fed. And you know, I've been right about this stuff very uh, many times before. The Fed comes up with a half a, uh, a percentage point cut, 50 basis point cut, and says, you know what? I think in their convoluted high flying English, you know, legalese, they basically say, you know what? This might be the end of the rate, rate cuts. Ah, what do you think the market's going to do? Pop up for about 10 minutes and see you later. We'll be down 300 points. Just remember that. You're hearing it first. Like I said, when I put out the 
on Sock Twitch tonight for the first time in a long time. And I put out the live webinar link before the fact, not after the fact. After the fact, everyone's a freaking genius. So that's not necessarily good. A 50 basis point cut with hawkish language, basically saying this might be the end of it for a little while. The markets are going to pop up and then pop down. Not an end of the bull market, but they're going to pop down. So that's it. So I would rather be a major buyer at these levels. That's just my theory. So that's why I say always have cash on the side. Even in the most bullish circumstances, I will not use more than 60 to 70%. Even in the most bullish circumstances. What is the most bullish circumstance for clueless safe trading tactical traders? These. These. Okay? Not these. These are not the most bullish circumstances. Down here. Okay? Down here. To me, as you know, I grit my teeth, I get you guys all going, and I basically say, you got to start piling in. These are the most bullish periods. Triple bottom. Not here. Now we got a little bit more room to move. What, the market's just going to shoot up to 39.4? Yeah, maybe it will. I don't know. We got a China deal. Yeah, all bets are off. The shorts are done. And there's a good chance we probably will. But if the market moves really fast and furious prior to the China deal, you know what's going to happen? We're going to get some sort of like, you know, it's not going to be a real deal deal, but more like a ceasefire. The markets are going to basically say, oh, we already moved up. See you later. We're going to drop. So this is where we are. This is what we were on September 26th. So let me give you the bullish case. And I'm keeping tonight's session real simple. I don't want to get into the hardcore MIT version of my uh, tactical explanations and stuff because you guys will be like, oh my God, you know. Um, I'll leave that for when I post during the day. So this is what we were. Okay, this is the fourth grade version I'd like to put out on stock trades. I'm like, this is the fourth grade version of the charts. All right, this is where we were on end of July, right here. So let's just put, this was the highs on the market, right? End of July. So the key is that we're not even, we're very close to it. So generally speaking, when you get close to a major top in the market, one way or the other, Iranian, Saudis, oil spike, whatever, you are going to get a pullback. So if you want to look at this channel as a bull flag, then you can expect, technically speaking, regardless of anything out there, a flag to be created. In order to create a bull flag, you have to have a flag, for God's sake. Does this look like a flag to anybody? No. So a flag is created when you get a consolidation in whichever form. So that consolidation is what can bring us to 2950, which is a retest of the major breakout of the sending triangle. Now, somebody's really bullish, and I'm more like kind of cautiously bullish. Where is the real ascending triangle? Right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's staring at you like no one's business. There. That. This is what an ascending triangle looks like. Boom. But before that, it can do this. That is what is going on now. So this ascending triangle, give or take, if it's contained, even if even if we fall to was 29.50, and we get up here, is going to bust a move, and that's where we're going to get out towards the next part of the trading range, which could be 13.80, 13.30. Am I clear with everyone? I mean, I'm just keeping this real simple, straightforward. Yes, yes. no, maybe. Okay, good. Yes. That's it. Now, enough of charts and stuff. Let's look at a couple of stocks. You know, that's where the money's made, right? So what do I like? What I like is what I told people to buy. 
didn't say, you know, get a second mortgage or if you don't have a mortgage, you know, just rob your grandma's bank and just like, you know, whatever. Um, I like healthcare companies. Why? Because they got cheap. And why? Because we made a lot of money on them over the last year, over the last couple of months. So let's take a look at Anthem Health. Now, what else happens during times of major duress? Like is happening right now with Saudi Arabia, oil and stuff. What uh, areas tend to, one of the areas which tend to perform better because money never really fully leaves the market. They go into money markets and then they go into different sectors, right? That's what's called sector rotation. So what sectors tend to do better during times of heavy volatility? Biotech. Not all biotech. Healthcare defensive companies like HMOs, which we have consistently overall made money. What's going to happen? Oh, the Saudis just uh, went after the Iranians. Iranians uh, threw out a couple of drones, taking out half of Saudi said they shut down 50% of their uh, oil production, which, by the way, they did, right? So what uh, serious stuff. Um, oh, uh, uh, no problem, Frank. Uh, you don't have to pay your health insurance. Oh, great. Love the Saudi kings. You know, bunch of billionaire. What billionaire? Trillionaire. Uh, spoiled brats. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, King Mohammed. Uh, 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 no, what's his name? He goes by the, the, the symbol. He's a very smart guy, by the way. ABS. I mean, I'm half kidding around. Um, and um, uh, oh, thanks for not like, you know, I don't have to pay my health insurance uh, for the next like three months. Oh, great, man. Thank you so much. Go ahead and bomb each other big time. Like, come on. No, it doesn't work like that. HMOs collect money. Right? I mean, seriously, think about it for a minute. Do you want to be in them? Now, technical pattern. We have played most of these bounces. And anyone who's been a Clueless State member knows very well. So, what's the big deal? We're right here. We just bought here. So, what's our downside? We actually know our downside. But more importantly, think what's your upside. Just a simple burp up towards the upper end of these consolidation channels. These are not consolidation channels. These are big W formation. This is uh, what uh, Dominic was talking about, the great Chinese that she had last night. You know, What's it called, the Wu Tu dragon? It's called the dragon bullish, all right? It's called the W formation. So yeah, exactly. So when you look at these charts, you don't need to be like, oh, what am I thinking of? You know, what's going on here? No, just freaking buy them, buy time and sit there. Because the more the markets go to turbulence, you know, with the techs getting attacked by the government, which is so stupidly stupid, if you ask me. Oh, Facebook is our state enemy. Apple, oh my God, you know, Google, you know, come on. You know, we call it, uh, we used to call it socialism. What happened here? Now the Justice Department wants to go after every single great technology company that made America great. Uh, okay, great, smart idea. Well, who needs the Chinese to put uh, 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 technology transfer and all that stuff? You know, why don't we just kill our own companies? That's so stupid. So seriously, guys. So bottom line is, but anyway, it won't matter. Because Facebook is going to keep on making money on Instagram forever till everybody is just saturated. Google's going to keep on doing what they do, which is great ads, all kinds of other businesses they're in. Apple, one of the finest companies in the world. Netflix, one of the greatest shows that I finally started watching in the past year after paying Netflix for like 10 years. So um, I finally started watching these great shows on Netflix. So um, Tesla's doing well, Microsoft like, keeps on just moving on. So yeah, keep on attacking the great American institutions because of political reasons. Yeah, that's really smart, guys. So, um, so bottom line is, let's stick to this, is gotta love it. Look at this pattern. Got a dollar cost average certain times down three or four bucks, but hey, Retest of the 34 at 270, retest of the immediate 
257 of the 20 day moving average, retest of the 50 at 280. Whoa. Now, is it possible that we could have another broadside attack by the idiotic Democratic candidates, like against uh, uh, private health insurance? Yeah, sure. But my point is, they ain't winning with their stupid policies. You give me a really business-friendly um, opposition candidate, sure, that's cool. But don't be like, oh, just like tax everybody to death uh, and just uh, kill everything that made America great. Uh, kill health insurance. Everyone's like just going to get health insurance for free forever. Doesn't matter if they're making a million dollars, they're always going to get it free. Like, cut the crap out. It's okay. So point is, yes, there is downside. However, I like this chart. Technically speaking, why do we like these charts? Simple. We like this, the full stochastics. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And you'd have a big fat smile in your face, and your bank account would be a lot fatter if you were with us at that time when we were buying these stocks. And we have traded the stocks periodically. What do I like most? Technically speaking, this excites me. Okay, this little baby excites me right there, 0.390. If you don't know what that means, well, join us, we'll teach you. It's not rocket science. This excites me, it's telling us big money is starting to move in. Watch, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Ooh, a little crossover, 8.131. Do I care about the numbers? No, just look at the visuals. So do what you need to do. This is great. Let's look at the next one, which is right here. But I am going to just show it on one chart. And please uh, stop with any questions you have. Um, I'm just giving you real money-making opportunities during times where other things might be, you know, now well, can they be down tomorrow? And like, oh, Frank is an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what? You're still going to make money. Now, you've got to buy time. You can buy September 20th. That's just very soon. So buy out September 27th. Go into October. This is nice. This is nice. Who cares about the price? Well, this is where the real money comes in. And we don't need it to go to 260. Every five, six, seven dollar move is your options going up 40, 60, 100 percent. It's not that hard, guys. There's always political risk with healthcare because it's been attacked by both the Republicans and Democrats. So we have to keep that in mind. But Overall, there's your, it's a major inverse head and shoulder. Left shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder, right shoulder. Neckline, first neckline, it's a little bit complex. Comes in at 250. I'll take 230 to 250 any day. That's called free money lying in your lap, except you're too frigging scared. You won't put it by a couple of options because, oh my God, the mullahs in Saudi Arabia and Iran are like, uh, you know, uh, trying to just rip at each other and just you know gillettes like actually gaining business because everyone's shaving their beards off like i don't know okay no just screw that all right just get into it now will there be a little bit of volatility absolutely however technically speaking if we break below the 221 level and i'm not talking what happens in one hour and stuff that's obviously a different story in which case we're going to test this so you could short it i don't like shorting these stocks because they are really you know no you can do it First neckline, major neckline, 270. Can it happen? Somebody said, some, one of my uh, 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 great uh, members asked me um, on, uh, on a DM, well, can it happen? I said, did it happen before? Did this happen? Did this happen? So why can't it happen now? And he's like, oh, you're right. I'm like, oh boy. If it's happened before, why can't it happen now? What happened with those companies? People stop paying their insurance premiums. So I like these. All right, as you can clearly tell, that's United Healthcare. Watch Humana. Humana. 
this so this is the same story this one actually is an uptrend which it held these are all daily charts right again same internals bottoming process on the false stochastics mcclellan not important why because it's not an extreme situation this histogram starting to decrease just the way it did every single time before and this is starting to turn this one has not fully turned yet the others have as i showed you it's good to go you can scalp them 50-day moving average is 282 all the different levels are here you can scalp them you can swing trade them i'd say swing trade them name is stock that you guys want to see miss nina oh nina's still there shop shop is no touch zone right now okay because somebody some big hedge fund is selling the crap out of it for reasons i don't know i can give you one reason it's very richly valued they call it the next amazon i'm sure shopify over the next six months three months is going to be a lot higher but I see major selling in that stock, like to a level I haven't even seen. Okay, so let's do the technical picture on this base. And plus, it's a Canadian company. Maybe we're just like, okay, we're just going to dump all Canadian companies. So, um, just kidding. So I am looking at uh, a. This is a, this is a complete technical breakdown. There's no two ways about it. All right. It was attempting to go nicely higher till uh, till the 12th. And then this massive sell program, I'm like, whoa. So those little calls never work. Remember at the 360s? Lottos didn't work. So I would be a major buyer based on simple dynamics on the daily of Shopify. Now anything can happen. We have one level of major support on Shopify. Let's uh, Let's zoom in. Okay, futures are down about 20. And by now, you guys are like, it's really tactically, I've totally brainwashed you. You're like, yeah, who cares, right? I love it. <laughs> so you're like, okay, Frank just brainwashed me into thinking of the market in very technical ways, you know. All right. Uh, never try to use tactical clueless say trading skills in a personal relationship it doesn't work okay guys just letting you know like you're having a fight with your partner your wife your husband uh and you're just like well logically you know if you look at it you know we're really on you know our relationship is really undervalued right now like oversold like sh we should really calm down and look to see if we should buy our relationship just kidding just never try all that stuff this is purely for trading purposes um, so, uh, this is a major level of support, 334, which is right there. I say it get, it, tomorrow it goes down, obviously, because of the market right at the open. I would be a major buyer of, uh, of uh, or at least a major uh, significant, like put in a bunch of money in it um, at um, 310. 310, 330, 310, right there. So that would be my case. Now, we are bottoming. We are bottoming. No question about it. But this is not one of these. We're still like, you know, like I said, some big hedge fund, one or two, are, there's a lot of forced selling going on. What we call institutional margin sellouts. So this is not a fundamental story right now. This is a story of, of forced selling. Some hedge fund is getting blown out. Some small one, big one, maybe they got a couple of hundred thousand shares, it's a lot of money, boom, 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 they're out. So I would be a buyer around 310, or if all hell breaks loose, to right now, this is a short a stock that you can trade options both long and short. Okay, so if it breaks below this level, you can sh you can buy some 310 puts. If it breaks below the 310, you can buy some 290 puts. You gotta be quick. Don't go to bed with them. Just trade them during the day, like as, as the stock is getting falling under major pressure. 
because it's not the first time this has happened. This is the first time it's come off this type of rounded top. There's your left shoulder. There's your right shoulder. So even if a dead cat bounce, you can get 30 points before it fall, uh, commend, you know, uh, continues its way down. If there are some other major issues with the company, we don't know about. But 275, 280, 300 would be a great buying level on a on a uh, on a uh, tactical on, on a tactical uh, bounce level. Uh, we could uh, we could actually uh, see the stock bounce from at around here to the 34 day moving average, which will act as major resistance, or even the 50 day moving average at 348. And the stock closed uh, at where? around 337. So I would be a very tactical trader, a fast trader on, on, on shop because the daily doesn't look that good. That's my, that's my answer. Um, any other stock uh, somebody wants me to look at? Because this is good stuff. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is, um, we, play, we have played this stock very well. NVIDIA, in my opinion, is very China, you know, 50% of the business comes from China. We get a China deal, which I think is happening. NVIDIA, like I've explained many, many times before, you're good for 195. Well, will it break through 195? I have no idea. This is major, major resistance, 195 to 198. Big gap fill. Stock is totally fine. Stock is totally fine right now. If you, look, if you want to really look at the tea leaves underneath the surface, you need to look at the, oops, 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 you need to look at the, this, this is very strong. This is showing you the underlying MACD, momentum average coincidental divergence, right? I still remember that term. It's like telling you like lots of strength, lots of strength. So this is, this is very China dependent. When tech stocks like Apple got hit because of the stupid Goldman which I don't want to even get into Apple. Which, yeah, we're going to get into Apple. That the analysts saying, oh, Apple, the, the way they're going to do their accounting is going to change everything. Apple, for the first time in their history, came out. I knew they were going to do it and defended and said, what the heck? Basically, what they said was, are you stupid? They told that analyst at Goldman, like, what are you talking about? That's what basically Apple said. And the stock basically had that little wrap, two bucks. Because this one analyst, didn't make any sense to me. And I believe me, I understand valuation and stuff better than most people out there. Like he's basically saying Apple's gonna change their whole accounting procedure because the fact that they are going to give people one year of free TV service, like duh, like what? Apple has hundreds of millions of, of people and one year of free TV service on the 499 plus, which by the way, in my opinion, is not a threat to Netflix at all. It's going to be a limited amount of shows and stuff. Original content takes a lot of billions of dollars to create. Look at the shows that Netflix creates. Unbelievable. So Apple's not going to get into that. In fact, Apple should buy Netflix, which I'm sure you're going to hear from Wall Street very soon. They should just friggin' buy Netflix. Then it's a superpower nobody can destroy. No drones. Yeah, they probably buy Netflix. But will Netflix sell themselves to Apple? Probably not. Maybe Apple buys Roku. Roku's more at danger, in my opinion. Because Roku doesn't create actual original content, does it? I don't think so. So NVIDIA. Uh, yeah, we're going to cover uh, Apple in a second. So NVIDIA is okay. Now, the thing to keep in mind, okay or not, let's look at the, uh, 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 let's look at the, uh, we'll stick on the daily, Jody. So what is, and this is something that I'm going to coax you into answering because you know. Where are the highways that a stock normally trades on or likes to be close to? That's the 34 and the 50. And in this case, the 34 and the 50 and the pink line is the 150 day moving average. What happens when you veer way off the highway? Generally pulls back. Yes, and what is that term called? It just Mind forms that? a forms a bull, no. bull flag. You should know that. Forget the bull flag crap, okay? It's called mean reversion, my friend Jody. It's called yeah. mean reversion. You revert back to the mean. Exactly. 
So this is the standard deviation is probably about plus four or plus three. What does that mean in simple English? It's moved too much away from the moving averages. In other words, it is overvalued short term, short term. OK, so basically, let's call it this as D is about uh, uh, plus three. Just a guesstimate looking at the visual picture. So basically, it's going to mean revert. So mean revert means it can come down to 175, 171 without for a single second change the overall direction of the upward market. I mean, uh, the, the uptrend. So yes, it, it got stretched out. It got stretched out. So now, and you're right about one thing, and I take my comment back. It is a bull flag. If you're looking at this section of the picture, it is a bull flag. Correct. Okay. And uh, oh my God, the it's just the headlines breaking. This is like totally non-technical. This is sad. Rick Ocasek, the guy who found the cars, you know, the great uh, rock band. He was how old? He was seventy-five. He he was found dead in his apartment in New York. I'm sorry about that, guys. I still I love the Cars. It's great, you know. What a great band, right? God bless us. Yeah. So, ah, that's what happens. He was so skinny, remember? Like it was not even funny. Um. All right. Well, this God bless us all. All right. Uh. So there we are. So yeah, mean reversion. So I I I still think the stock once a small in click of anything positive out of the china junior level talks and stuff stock is good stock is good for 200 uh to 188 but short term uh, this is the volatility you can uh, expect now there is a major downtrend line which i had shown from weeks and weeks ago uh which is this one and that downtrend line is at 171. If for some reason the stock breaks 171, then obviously it's going to come and retest the moving averages or lower. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So, uh, but so far so good. You know, it's okay. Uh, it's buy time again. Let the Chinese stocks continue, um, but expect the average volatility. Let's take a look at Apple, Miss Nina. All right. Apple's chart is bullish. It's bullish. We have talked about Apple for a long time. We have traded Apple very well. We have lost money on Apple on these type of situations where the stock suddenly drops. What happened on Friday with uh, the uh, Goldman analyst is, in my opinion, meaningless because he didn't make sense. It doesn't mean some uh, hedge funds are not going to short the stock for next week, like they say. You know, when a stock is like down a couple of bucks, the hedge, hedgies, some of the hedgies just pour in and just slam it like, come on, just hit it and hit it. So net net, you have a large rising wedge. It's giving you the bigger picture. We hit the upper end of the rising wedge. Analyst or no analyst, we're going to pull back anyway. So this was the movement on Apple. I look at Apple purely, um, and here is where, we are looking at things. This was a major breakout level. Right here. Price on left. 214. Apple breaks 214. The stock is going to come down. Again, Apple has the same story with like NVIDIA, Jody. It is stretched at this point. We made a sweet amount of money on Apple when I told people to buy when the stock was kind of pulling back a little bit on their big event. And what happened the next day? The stock was up five bucks, six bucks. This happened. All right. Because I think what they're doing is great strategy. The new phones, yeah, maybe they won't sell as much. I know I'm going to be buying. I already played. I'm going to be placing my order this week. But is everybody going to switch over to the iPhone 11, you know? No, probably not. But their services business, the fact that they're introducing $4.99 a month, I mean, this is huge stuff. And plus, they're lowered. They came up with a cheaper version of the other iPhone. I don't even know the model. I just stick to the XX Max, the 8 Plus. My 8 Plus is what I'm probably going to get another XX Max. I need two iPhones. So bottom line is um, the stock right now would be a great buy on a retest of this. This was a big ascending triangle too, a W formation. Uh, so 214 would be a terrific buy. If Apple falls from 219 to 214, that would correlate with the markets dropping another 300 point on the front side, just so you know. 
So this actually makes sense. When I said we should hit 29.50, not that I would want it, but yeah, it should. So we get some really cheap buys. Well, in that case, Apple's going to test 211 to 213. However, if the markets don't hit lower levels, because Apple is a major market moving stock, then we should be expecting that 215, 216 level to be a major floor. The upper end of this Bollinger is still 223. Apple is completely algorithmically driven, machine straight Apple, not humans, even though humans participate in it. We don't have the power to move. Remember, as humans, or even institutions in some cases, do not have the power to move a trillion plus dollar stock. It has to be big, big programs which can do it. You and me buying a couple of calls on Apple and we think, oh my God, you know, we're going to move. The stock's like they're watching us. They're going to make us lose money. They don't even know we exist. So wake up and smell the coffee, all right? You hear from retail traders like, oh, man, every time I get in, you know, it's like they're watching me. Like, yeah, you're so special. You're the queen of England or the Saudi king. They're all watching you. Come on, wake up. The markets don't care. So Apple takes a lot to move. However, um, chart is fine. Can Apple get to 230? Well, we get a great China deal and stuff. Yeah, Apple will hit 225, just the way I said it would hit 224 and take out a high. It did. So one more than Apple. Apple was going to pull back anyway, without that, you know, because it got to the upper end of the wedge. It was a new all-time high. This is this is again another bull flag formation. But bull flags can extend lower, so a couple of extra points on here would be doable. But nothing technically broken. Nothing technically broken. We don't get a China deal. Ladies and gentlemen, Apple's going to come here. Right there. Retest that big. These are the big buy points in Apple. This is when you can buy a ton and just like walk away from the screen, which is the 207, 205 level. So if you want to let that play out, sure. That, you can do that. In the meantime, these are this is the buffer zone. This is the support, support, and uh, technically the chart is fine. Now, if somebody says, "Well, what can? What do you really think?" Well, first of all, I don't think. I try to take the messages that my all these different indicators are showing us. So, if you look at the, um, if you look at the internals, like the MACD, still looking damn good. I don't see any sign of this happening right so if you're looking at this purely looking at the stove is still above 80 showing you signs of relative strength showing you signs of underlying support it's fine doesn't mean the stock can be down two or three bucks so great um any others anyone wants to look at all let me give you a big hand uh, shout out to all my uh Immune therapeutics. I'm not gonna even ask who has it, who doesn't. I don't have a lot, but I have enough to, uh, you know, like okay. So let's take a look at the stock here. This is the world's first initial major FDA, Federal Drug Administration, not cocaine, real prescription drugs, guys. You know, some people are like, oh, FDA. This is not the DEA, okay, guys. So um, this is great. They're going to save so many lives. Kids have peanut allergies. People have peanut allergies. I don't have another allergy, so I never understood what it was. I just eat like eating all kinds of, you know, almonds and just all the fatty nuts. Macadamia is my favorite. But, yeah, this is serious stuff, guys. And the world's first company to do that. And an American company at that. This is what makes America great, okay? This is great. So where's the stock right now after hours? After hours, the stock's hovering around there. Technical aside, there's a lot of emotions involved here. I believe that the stock will hit a major roadblock around 32. The most the stock ever got to was 36. This is a stock that hasn't been up a lot from, from the beginning of the year, to be honest with you, compared to other drug stocks, some of the other drug stocks. This was the beginning of the year right there. So where was it at that point? It was around 22. So if you really think about it, I'm sorry. Where was it at the beginning of the year? 
let me see here. Beginning of January, the stock was here. Look on the right, it was around 24. We're barely above that. And this is a rock star of his, of his stock based on what the, the approval. So honestly, this daily chart doesn't do justice. Can the stock zoom up to 36? Sure it can. Can there be selling right off the bat tomorrow just because the algos are completely manipulative? A big block program sells in another big uh, red candle because the stock is here as of Friday night, 28.30 or 28.50. So is it possible just completely falls here? Fine, I'll buy it as long as the technical picture doesn't change. Because that's a manipulative program that might come in and just throw all of you out and how many reversal trades have we won? So it doesn't matter. We have cheap calls. We have the 30 calls, right? The September 20th, 30 calls. I'll bring them out. If it opens up at 28, 30 bucks, I'll sell them. I'll buy the October ones because I think stock has a lot of potential. Now, saying all that, let's take a look at the weekly. So people who are not in it, great. You have another chance. So I'm going to draw this out for you fine ladies and gentlemen. Here's your major downtrend line. Big one, right? Let's do this. This is your channel. So if it didn't get that approval, where would it be? It'd be down here. Just like that. Boom. Straight down. Instead, it's here. Exactly there. Will that find resistance there, technically speaking? Absolutely. So let's look at it. Let's analyze it. And then we do, uh, we're going to uh, close out the session. Wow. With hour and a half you guys must be having fun um where is where is where is where is jody's the expert on these range breakouts right jody one second i'm putting him on the spot jody's a good friend of mine so um this is a stock actually very easy to to Analyze. I've actually analyzed this AMIT that much. It's not a day trading stock. So, where's the range? This is the range the stock's been in since it came. So when did it come public? Okay, so it came public in, if I'm right, oh, 2015, it's been there. Oh, wow. Okay, so you can still see that um, you have to go weekly. Sorry, I'm going fast. So, uh, real simple, uh, and people just chime in and help me. What's this price here? 27 and a half, let's call it 28. What's the price here, 15? Let's call it 15. What's the range that the stock has been in for since forever, since it broke out here back in 2017? So forget this. So this is your range. The stock's been tra traveling in. 13 points. Real simple, guys. Back of the napkin stuff. Add 13 to the 28 breakout. 41. In other words, the stock has a potential over a reasonably short period of time. And, and, and it's pretty heavily shorted, by the way. And Nestle owns supposedly 20% of the company. You know. So you got two major catalysts here. So it can hit 41. So that's, that's you know, here's your range. 15 points. 13 points, we said, 13. A major downtrend line breakout over 29 and it'll certainly attempt to do that because this is exactly what the stock is right now right at the downtrend line no magic right next level is 32 and a half best case scenario 35 worst case scenario the stock basically immediate sell program hits comes down to its 22 23 
as long as it stays above 21, 20, uh, as long as it stays above the 23 level, we're good to go. So uh, let's look at the internals quickly to try to read the tea leaves. Heavy volume after hours. No, that was a ninth. Ninth? Oh, that was just a weekly chart. That's why. Sorry. Uh, this is looking good. Didn't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out. They were net buyers all the way through. I love the candlestick structure. Anyone who studies candlesticks, which I absolutely live and breathe by, I like it. This was your weekly buying. Uh, let's take a look at McClellan. No, we don't need to. We don't care. This we like. Even a kid could understand it. Why? Because normally things don't get really overbought till the stoves on the MACD just the MACD, uh, his, not just the histograms, but the actual stochastics move up to about one to two. We're, we're just barely coming out of the woodwork here. That's it. All right, guys, features are down 19. Fantastic being with you all. This is terrific. Make it happen. This week is going to be very turbulent, just letting you know. We've laid out the roadmap. And Nina, join us ASAP. Um, you're going to see a lot of stuff on the private Twitter feed that's going to just impress your mind out like you've never seen. I'm telling you right now. All right. We are very contrarian when it comes to the markets. We do not follow the herd. We tend to buy when nobody's looking at it. We tend to sell when everyone's like getting a little too giddy, which nobody is, by the way which is great and you're going to find out and learn more about the markets than probably any other service out there on that note i'll bless you all good night